Hello everyone, I'm Matt with EDHREC and we're here with a very special video for you all. This video actually, it, it's so special, I had to bring in a co-host just to help me handle everything that's going on. So <laughs> today I'm joined by a great friend of the show. She's a member of the Commander Rules Committee, host of Commander at Home and Elder Dragon Hijinks, along with just being a mainstay of the Magic Cosplay community. Olivia Gobert Hicks. So Olivia, welcome back to the channel. Hi Matt, thanks for having me. Excited to be here and chat about this uh, fun little project you guys have been working on. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but we're super excited and that's why we kind of wanted to bring you on for that special purpose. So it's gonna be cool? It's pretty amazing, <laughs> I would say. Take it even further than cool. So starting this month, not only did Archidex partner up with EDH Rec, but also Cardsphere. So we have everybody coming together for a monthly deck building contest. They've been doing it for a while now, hosted right on Architect. And there were just so many websites coming together to partner with this that I wanted to use partner with on you to bring you in and help me out with this. I don't remember that being in my rules text, but we'll make it work. <laughs> I mean, you have so many That's actually partners. a fib. I'm co-hosting two shows, so I do probably have partner with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that sounds uh, pretty sweet to have, you know, obviously a deck building resource, a deck building site, and now a place to get all your cards together to make it all cohesive. Yeah. Well, whether you're a seasoned deck builder or just getting into the game, Architect is obviously the best brewing site out there. So we're excited to uh, have this contest going and see what y'all come up with. So how exactly, Matt, does it work? So Architect, is, like I said, has been doing this for a while now. So they're going to release deck building prompts on the first Wednesday of every month. And prompts are gonna vary all over the place, whether it's a specific strategy they want you to lean into. The prompt changes all the time, but it's a unique and interesting prompt that's gonna spark some creativity for each month's entries. We do know that restriction breeds creativity. So basically mm -hmm. it's like gonna have like a budget constraint or it's going to have some kind of you know, restriction on how the deck is built to get people to broaden the horizon, as it were, about their commanders or a certain play style. That's right. So the prompts are going to be released, like I said, on the first Wednesday of every month, and folks are going to be given a week to brew and submit their deck lists. And then after that, we're going to choose three finalists that we talk about every single month right here on these videos. And then we're going to let the listeners choose the winner. So first place prizes is going to be $250 on cardsphere.com. Second place gets $150. And then third place still gets $100 in credit to their Cardsphere account. Awesome. And players can submit their decks by sharing in the Architect Discord or tweeting to Architect within the submission period. And the submissions will also be accepted by posting your deck links on the announcement post on Architect.com. But they must be Architect links for that to go through. So this month's contest is ending and we're here to talk about the three finalists and kind of show folks what the expectations are moving forward and like how this all works cohesively. So yeah, we just wanted to have a big announcement video to really push forward this, this new partnership. And the winners, like I said, are chosen by all of the viewers. So make sure you click on the links in the description of this video to check out the entire decks for all three finalists and the deck with the most upvotes at the end of this voting period will be the winner chosen by you, the listeners. That's right. Well, we've got three decks uh, that have been tasked this month with showing an atypical strategy for any given commander. So basically, we're gonna be rolling with something that is not typically what you would build around. So we've got three great decks to talk about, so let's get into it. Our first deck today is submitted by user Shu Wuberg. It's Kibo Uktabi Prince, a two and a green legendary monkey noble. That's a two, two. You can tap for each player to create a colorless artifact token named Banana. With tap, sacrifice this artifact, add red or green, you gain two life. But we're gonna be turning those artifacts into creatures to smack people with. Key cards in the deck are Displaced Dinosaurs, which will let you make your bananas come in at seven sevens to beat down your opponents. Halston, Emerald Arch Druid, and Alloy Animus as other ways to animate your bananas and Fangren Marauder to gain a ton of life throughout the game. So Olivia, this deck to me just has so many fun synergies that's playing around with. I mean, obviously like Displaced Dinosaurs to make seven, seven bananas. You get that's huge just, dino nuggies. Yeah, it's amazing. Is that not just hilarious? <laughs> that's like the funniest thing. So Displaced Dinosaurs counts all of your historic permanents. So sure a bootlegger stash, for example, you can have Battle Mage's Bracers be a 7-7 Dino, so dinosaurs do wear gloves. That is a proven fact now, according to this Kibo deck. That's right, absolutely. And I mean, that means Asika's Chariot is now driven by dinosaurs and not kitties. 
That, that is true, too. <laughs> I mean, it comes with kitties still, though. It you're still, still you're comes still with kitties. The, kitties. the kitties are in the basket. The kitties are in the basket. <laughs> yeah, this deck is so fun. It reminds me a lot of my own deck that I have, Raga Draga Gorgut's Boss, which is a fun gruel sure, sure. commander that gives you all sorts of abilities to pump up creatures with mana abilities. And in fact, Kibo, this Kibo deck here, is playing Raga Draga Gorgut's Boss, along with some other heavy hitters mm -hmm. that I love so much. Stuff like Forsaken Monument that makes your bananas even more bananas, as in that much bigger. Yeah, for sure. There's all so many fun things going on in this Kibo list. Well, and even if you don't have Kibo out or you're using bananas with Jahira, friend of the forest, mm -hmm. you'll just have tap to use the tokens. You don't have to sacrifice them because of Jahira's ability that lets you just tap tokens you control for green, which is awesome to have that kind of ability to ramp up with tokens and then use them as ramp. They're still humongous. They may be dinosaur lands. Who knows? There's just, there's a lot going on here with how this all works. And I really think it's quite neat. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so many ways to amass an absolute artifact creature army, which is not something you normally see in Gruul. So this is just a really inventive take. I like it a lot. Yeah, it, it's super funny. Then Th there's some fun cards too, like Patriarch's Seal. Mm -hmm. You have stuff like Instill Energy. So you're able to get multiple Kibo activations every yeah. single turn. Yeah. There's, there's so, I, I just love this deck. And also I love the aesthetic of this deck. I am a boomer <laughs> when it comes to magic. And so seeing all the old border, right? I mean, you, you folks, you have to go to architect.com to look at this list. It, just seeing all the old borders, it makes me feel at home. I, I love it so much. And just cause we're saucy, there is a fun little combo here with Seeker of Skybreak and Illusionist Bracers, which means you can untap things as much as you might like, which can let Kibo uh, make a lot of bananas. Yeah, it, it really does kind of go bananas. And I, oh, I mean that to joke and, and totally seriously. Oh, no, dad jokes allowed. Nope, nope, Olivia, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> you knew what you were coming into. Um, why don't you just get us into the second deck then? Because all three of these decks are, are spicy. We can't just talk about Kibo all day. Deck number two is submitted by a user Wajin Soshu or a name I cannot pronounce. And I'm so sorry I butchered it, but I don't know how those letters go together. It's Ishin, but all of the attack triggers are on your opponent's attacks. Ishin, of course, is Mardu for a legendary human samurai that's a 3-4. If a creature attacking causes triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Key cards include Goblin Spymaster and Combat Calligrapher, which are ways to give opponents creatures to both attack with and then force those creatures to attack. Ishin's triggers will then give your opponents more with Calligrapher Inklings. Death's Kiss is a way to increase the damage output of your opponents to end the game quick. And Breen of the Demagogue is a political tool that can help incentivize other players to not attack you with card draw. Plus, she's an engine for you too. So Olivia, I feel like every time I see an Asheen deck, a lot of them kind of play out the same way. And so this is such a mm -hmm. fun and inventive way to kind of turn the tables and it's still Asheen, it's still making multiple combat triggers, but incentivizing your opponents to do all the heavy lifting for you, right. that's, that's a political strategy I can get behind. Yeah, it's really wild seeing it used this way. Um, it's definitely not the kind of thing you would think of, right? But having the goat abilities, having all the ways to just make them fight amongst themselves makes it all the more fun to kind of watch the battle play out for yourself and then just swing it at the end for the win. Yeah, I mean, Brina the, the Demagogue, that's just such a powerful engine and it's motivating your opponent. So it's not even like goad, because I know sometimes goad can kind of get a little tired. People don't yeah. want to be forced to attack and put kind of some weird social situations out there. But when you're mm -hmm. incentivizing them to, and they're actually enjoying it, then I think everyone at the right. table is gonna have such a better experience for that. So I really just like <laughs> the, again, the politics behind how this Ishin deck is working out. Yeah. Yeah, and then cards, Death's Kiss, mm -hmm. that's just gonna make so much damage. I mean, even if somebody is swinging with an already big creature, doubling up on the ability to double up the, their power until end of turn, that is a wildly powerful ability. It's gonna deal so much damage. I just, it's so cool to see people take what is normally a pretty fleshed out strategy and really turn it on its head. Absolutely. And again, combat calligrapher like actually really is a neat thing here because you are definitely making those inklings for everybody else on those attack triggers. It's doubling because it's Ishin, but those are inklings that can't attack you anyway. So it's not even that they're being goaded that they have to attack. They just can't come after you. So that letting the other players have the sense of agency and how they're attacking when they're attacking is all great. You're just removing yourself from their mental calculus. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing that I've noticed is sometimes decks like this that rely on goad and having your opponents deal all the damages, they can't win the game when it comes down to 1v1. But this deck actually kind of fixes that a little bit. There's yeah. cards like Hissing Miasma, mm -hmm. Blood Reckoning, where whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, 
that creature's a controller loses one life. So you're able to really get down to it and make sure, okay, your creatures have to attack me and you're gonna get punished for doing that. So it's a nice way to actually close games out yeah. instead of causing a bunch of chaos and then disappearing in the 1v1. Yeah. That's so wild. Just ah, I, I love how that just finishes games out. Exactly, yeah. And an enchantment, which, you know, as as we're all probably slightly aware, commander players are not the best at running enchantment and removal. We can do better, everybody. <laughs> or don't do better because I really like playing Enchantress. <laughs> that, that's absolutely true. So, I mean, so if we want to talk about powerful enchantments, we do have one more deck and there are a few in this last list. So Olivia, give us this last deck to talk about. All right, our third and final deck was submitted by user Radix59. It's Saskia, but you're choosing yourself. Saskia the Unyielding is black, red, green, white for a legendary human soldier that's a 3-4. She's got vigilance and haste. As Saskia the Unyielding enters the battlefield, choose a player. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. Key cards here are Darien, King of Keldor. This is the card that's gonna make this deck really cook. It combines with Soul Sisters like Arya Champion and Soul Warden to gain your life right back. Axis of Mortality and Soul Conduit are cards that will give you massive swings by switching life, and Invincible Hymn will give you more ways to gain tons of life. So I, I know Commander is a format where you can play truly whatever you want to play, but I also still don't think it's every day that you get to see a deck that tries to win with near-death experience. That's, that's not bananas. something that comes along very often. It's <laughs> two and triple white for an enchantment that says that at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have exactly one life, you win the game. I don't remember the last time I ever saw that in a commander game. It's, uh, yeah, I don't think I ever have either, but it's one of those absolute weird corner case cards that when you win by it, it's a hell of a story and it's one that you want to tell every time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's kind of the yeah. achievement unlocked type of cards where Xbox will send you a notification letting you know you did something just absolutely cool. Absolutely, yeah. So there's a bunch of obviously really interesting cards in here. You, I mean, obviously, if you're choosing yourself with Saskia, you want Darien out <laughs> on the board as fast as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody pick themselves with Saskia. So this whole deck is operating right? on, on just a completely different axis than what I've ever seen. I, I really, really like that because that is the kind of harebrained stuff I like to do. It's just like, I'm gonna choose me with Saskia and just get those looks at the table like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what What is she doing? And, well, and then right? everybody's going to realize it. And then they're gonna be in trouble. Like, oh, I'm, I'm in so much danger. But it, <laughs> this is such a cool deck for one of my favorite type of Soul Sisters cards, cards that when creatures enter the battlefield, you gain life, mm -hmm. that has just impressed me so much since I started playing it is Ellis Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim. Oh yeah. Nobody will want to blow up the board when it gets out of hand because an Ellis trigger is just gonna kill everybody. Absolutely, we'll just have Ellis and Skull Clamp out. If you've got Darien out there too, there you go. You can just start, start going, drawing cards, pinging your enemies. You hit them with the soul conduit and <laughs> exchange life totals if you want to, if things are really dire. I mean, there's all kinds of options here to just make sure no matter what situation you're in, you can claw your way back out of it for the win. Yeah, just the, the more that I've looked into this deck, the more it just looks like an Olivia deck. Like you've got all the life gain <laughs> manipulation. You've got ways to turn your life into resources, whether it's like necropotence. But I'm going to hurt myself first. Let, yeah. <laughs> you're never going to see it coming. <laughs> you can't hurt me as bad as I can hurt me. Yeah, I, only I get to hurt me. You guys are screwed. But yeah, this this deck is just so much fun. There's just so many fun synergies. And there's there's cards like Halo Fountain. You can... I love Halo Fountain wins. They're so out of left field. It's I know. the best. And it's it's not just like, oh, like I guess okay, you win the game foregone conclusion. Like these are such sure. silly hoops to have to jump through to do it. And, oh, absolutely. And like if you want to do the near death experience, of course you have mm -hmm. Fortune Thief, because why wouldn't you? There are quite a few combos here that you can explore with Platinum Angel and Axis Morality. There's also Platinum Angel, Magus of the Mirror Wall of Blood, Near Death Experience. Tons of cards here that have redonkulous synergies that'll get you the win quickly, if that's what you need. Yeah, there's just so many fun cards that you just, you're not gonna see in really any deck around, yeah. much less in a Saskia deck that's gonna beat yourself up. So this one also just, this gets my creative juices flowing. <laughs> I think this is such a fun way to kind of execute and again, kind of like all these other decks, really are living up to the theme of the deck building prompt this month. Yeah, yeah. Where they're just doing things that you're not gonna see the typical deck that for this commander just tr even trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Olivia. So those were three pretty fantastic decks. I think we can all yeah, agree. Yeah, those were, those were really, really interesting takes on those commanders. It was very, very enlightening to see just like where people can go and what they can build with that yeah. in mind of just 
okay, well, this isn't what you expect. Like it is, but it isn't. You know? yeah, and it's always You're... super fun to see just decks as unique as the person brewing them too. I think that's another right? like, way to highlight who everything. Who thinks about having Saskia target you? Like Nobody. I... Well, one That's person, great. one person, <laughs> one person, <laughs> at least that we know of that came up with it. It's just, yeah, having, having those kind of, you know, put the expectation on its head is it's those kind of decks are always really fun to see out in the wild. So it's neat seeing them brood. And like, I, I would be interested in making these and see how they, seeing how they play out. Yeah, absolutely. So remember everyone. So the winners are going to be chosen by whatever deck has the most upvotes in this voting period. So make sure you check out the links in the description and vote for your favorite decks. Absolutely, make sure you vote for your favorite. You can vote for all of them if you like, the upvotes are what are gonna decide it. So yep. by all means, check out these deck lists and help decide who's gonna get that $250 prize. If you wanna participate in this next month or any month following, every Wednesday, that uh, first Wednesday of the month, that prompt will be put up on Architect.com. Yep, so make sure you follow Architect on social media because they're gonna talk about all the finalists there as well and you can submit your decks on Architect and we'll announce the winners when the time comes for those as well. So make sure you check everything out there over at Architect.com. But with that said, Olivia, where can everybody find you if they wanna see more of your content? If they want to subject themselves to that, they can find me on YouTube at either Elder Dragon Hijinks or Commander at Home. And then also on socials, I only have Insta and Twitter at Go Bear Hicks. Awesome. And as always, you can find me at Mathemus55 on pretty much any social media platform and every week here on the EDH RepCast YouTube channel. So with that, everyone, we will see you next month with more finalists. Until then, happy brewing.